So next up is uh, Lyndon Wood and um, Joe, if you want to start with a opening statement, um, we would appreciate that. You can um, let us uh, give us a preview of the 2023 season while you're looking forward to um, anything else that you want to touch on. Uh, go ahead, Joe. Yeah, no, um, I'm really looking forward to the start of the season for us. Uh, scheduled pretty tough right out of the gates. Uh, so we have five tough matches to start. Uh, we're at Grand Canyon next weekend, um, hoping that everything with Southwest is going to get sorted out by then. Uh, that's my number one concern, honestly. Um, and then after that, we're, we're home against NJIT uh, the Wednesday after that. And then we literally leave the next day right after that. And we're going out to play uh, USC and Long Beach out there. Um, and then to, to kind of wrap up our non-conference slate um, before we jump into the first half of conference, we'll host uh, Long Island and Missouri S&T. And then we kind of go through the first half of conference slate and, and kind of get to experience all that. So uh, guys got back in the gym a couple of days ago. Uh, they've been working really hard. They've been playing, playing over break as much as they can and, and working out as much as they can over break. So um, I'm excited to kind of get going. I know the guys are excited to get going too. Uh, Coach, uh, can you also introduce your uh, the student athletes that you brought with you? Yeah, so uh, first one is Kyle Deutschman. Uh, he's a libero on the team. Um, the next is Connor Sheehan. He's the setter on the team. And AJ is also on here. Uh, I don't know if he's going to get video or not, but AJ Lewis is also on here. He's, he's our outside opposite. So a question for all the players. You look at this Lindenwood team, 2023, what do you think going into the season is going to be your team's biggest strength? You got it, Kyle. You can go first. <laughs> uh, I, I think it's our team's work ethic. Um, we've got a lot of really, really hard workers in the gym. Um, everybody's trying their very best to fall out every single day, and it's the competition in the gym that's really going to raise our level. Um, it's never an easy day. We've got people fighting for spots um, day in and day out, and it makes the gym environment a lot of fun, and it's uh, bringing the team together as well. All right, I'll, I'll go, AJ. So um, this year, you know, we were ranked seven in the conference, and everyone in the locker room kind of, like, believes that we, we can be at the top with all those, like, the Ball States, Ohio States. So we all kind of believe and we all buy into the program and what Joe's trying to do this year. So that's one big step that the whole team has over some other teams that I think, personally. Uh, uh, can you guys hear me? Yep. All right. I apologize. My laptop, I was having technical difficulties. It wouldn't let me do video or audio. Uh, could you give my mic? Would you mind repeating the question, please? Oh, yeah, no, no problem, AJ. So the question was, what do you feel is the biggest strength of this team in 2023? Um, I would say our biggest strength is resilience. I think um, as a team, we've dealt with a lot of adversity. And I think what is really worth noting for me, especially being a senior, being my last year, if not my la one of my last years, if not my last year here at Lindenwood is um, just like we've been able to overcome a lot. We fought through a lot of stuff, both in the team, external. We got Southwest going on right now. We've dealt with COVID. We've been through a pandemic. We've been through a lot together and we've always found a way to come back and still compete and still be a great team. So that's probably my our, what I think is our biggest strength. <laughs> Um, I'll, I'll uh, go next. Uh, AJ, I was uh, emailing uh, Joe yesterday that I was kind of individually, uh, personally happy that you were going to be on because I still remember your performance against Lewis last year. Um, can you? I, I realize we're talking about the 2023 season, and you know the focus should be going forward. But can you um, take us back to that uh, match against Lewis? Uh, went uh, the distance and. Yeah, you probably have the match of your life. Um, yeah, just talk us uh, through that match. Yeah, so um, I don't 
it's hard to that match is hard to uh to kind of describe for me um at some points like some of the details are even hard to remember um kind of just all went so blur i just remember being like just like locked in like it's hard for me to look back at where it was because in the moment i was just laser focused but um i don't know i think me personally um i thrive in environments where i we are <clears throat> either the underdog or underdog or there's a lot of adversity <coughs> excuse me, so, like, going up against a guy like Tyler Mitchum and a really good team, like, those are the, the moments I look for. Like, I look for those moments to thrive and to push my team to get the W that we need. So, yeah, it was a very entertaining match and happy I could get it done and we could get it done as a team against that top opponent. Oh, Coach, um you hear your players talk there's a belief amongst all your guys that this is a team capable of finishing in the top half of the Miva. and two parts of that you know one how do you feel as a coach when you have that instilled that belief and confidence in your team and then the second part of that is what is your team going to have to do to achieve that goal yeah no that's fair um no as a coach it's great um you know from the get-go in the fall it's it's you know, something that we've always been trying to rally around and, and that's a common thing. And so, you know, like it's, it's where the conference kind of views us currently. And, and it kind of adds just a little bit of bulletin board material and a little bit of a chip on the shoulder that everyone can kind of rally around that. Um, so the guys, they know that they understand that. And, and it's a little extra motivation for them to, you know, at times when we're in the gym and, you know, when we were having the morning practices at 6 a.m., like, you know, who else is in the gym at 6 a.m.? You know, there's probably a couple of teams, but, you know, if, if that's the motivation to keep them going from 6 until 8.30 every single day, and, and, you know, we have weights right after that in the fall, like, that was the motivation for, for them to kind of keep going and keep pushing forward. And, um, you know, like I said, like, the, the schedule is, is going to be really good in the sense of it's going to challenge us in the beginning and, and hopefully get us ready for some of those high-caliber teams, and, and then we could kind of assess and go from there, and, and we're ready to go moving forward. Uh, in order for us to achieve it, we just got to keep working hard. Um, and, and the guys know that. Um, one of the things that we constantly talk about is like never missing an opportunity to compete and always making sure that we're, we're working hard and we're ready to go. Um, and that's, that's the component that we're trying to hammer home again right now, as soon as they got back a couple of days ago. And that's what we're working towards now in the gym. And that's not just on one aspect of the game. That's first contact. That's, you know, offensively, that's defensively. Like we have to outwork some opponents if we want to win some of these matches that are going to be tough. And, and they know that it's going to be tough opponents. So it's more just how are we going to take that next step and, and kind of elevate it and get this going in the right direction. Um, the next question goes to TJ. Go ahead, TJ. All right, thanks. Yeah, TJ, I appreciate it. DB Elo. Uh, coaches, I think for you, you mentioned a couple of times, uh, January is going to be a tough month. <laughs> um, loaded schedule, right, to start. It's apart from, you know, five straight wins. Uh, what are you really hoping to see and kind of what areas are you really hoping to focus on to get this team started on the right foot? Yeah, uh, I think honestly, like if we could establish a consistent and solid first contact, that's going to be pretty, pretty big for us. So whether that's the serving component and in the passing and serve receive side, um, we're going to see some big arms in these first month, like for without a doubt, probably some of the best that we're going to see all year. Um so it's more like, how can we consistently be ready to weather that storm when we're in those situations? And the better part is too, like four out of the five of those are in hostile environments at, on the road. So them more getting used to playing some of those teams on the road and being ready to kind of elevate the game, whether the crowd's against you or even on that one home game that we have in January too, that we're able to, you know, kind of ride off the crowd. Thankfully, all the students are going to be back. And that's one thing that I think Linwood's trying to make a really great push for towards now is, is home crowds and home atmosphere, especially with us now making this jump to division one. And, you know, for us, it didn't really change a whole lot, but for the atmosphere and the vibe on campus for all the other programs now to be working through the D one status, it, it's kind of an awesome atmosphere that we've seen at other sports and we're hoping it can reciprocate for us too. <laughs> Coach, you uh, took uh, my question. I was going to ask you about the D1 transition, but thank you for answering that. Uh, Vinny, you're next. Yeah, question for Connor. Connor, you're entering your, you know, second season as, you know, the starting center. Although you had some starts in 2021. What do you feel has been the biggest growth in your game since we last saw you in 2022? And then 
Also, how do you feel the offense is, is looking as you ramp up for the season? Um, I think the biggest growth for me personally has been kind of like the, the mental side of the game. Like the physical stuff kind of comes, it's always, it'll always be there, I feel like. But if you can still, how do I put this? Like have your mental side good and have the, an upper edge on your opponents just through having a good mindset and have, helping your teammates out too, like not getting on them in the games and stuff like that. That I think has been the biggest jump for me as being a junior now. And then, sorry, what was the second part of the question? I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. And then the second part, how do you feel the offense is looking? How do you feel your connections are with your hitters as you enter the season? I feel like it's – I'm right where I want to be right now. It could always – everything could always be better. But right now, I feel like we got some heavy arms. We can compete with those guys, top guys, and where we go the first – week two weeks and I feel like everything's clicking right now like we got some new guys coming in this year that haven't played a match their whole career so excited to see how they how they um, compete with everyone and see what where it takes us you know I trust all my guys I, whenever I said I always trust that they can get a kill so it's just the trust factor in them too and not leaving them if they make two errors in a row to still come back to them it's all it's all just helping them out and being confident in them. And then question for Kyle. Kyle, last season you got served a lot. Sure, you're going to be continuing to get served. So much is talked about, you know, the passing game and the serving game. Can you give us a little insight into what are some of the most challenging serves that you face and how do you adapt when a team is on a good serving run or you're going up against a good server? Yeah, I, I think everyone's like they're kind of afraid of those big topspin serves, but at, at a point you can always treat those like like a dig. Um, and we play defense every single day, so as much fun as those are to pass, uh, those aren't the ones that I usually worry about too much. Uh, it's the guys that are serving those hybrid serves where, you know, we we might not know where it's going because they might not know where it's going. Um, so the, my biggest adjustment that I like to do is, you know, if they get one or two points, like make an adjustment right away, um, either pull someone up or push someone out, get, just give them a new look, um, always change it up, um, you know, play, it's, it's like a game within the game. Like if you can get them off, um, you know, on their back foot, that gives us an edge to get that side out real, uh, much more quickly. I think we have time for one more question. Um, question for Connor and for Joe. Um, actually, uh, uh, Brandy has a question. Uh, I'll go with Brandy first. Hello, boys. Thanks for being here with us. Hopefully my speaker's working. Uh, coach, for you, and mostly this is just to make Jonathan mad, can you give us a little bit your philosophy on serving and um, how you feel about Miss serves, are they a part of the game? Is this something that makes your legs shake? Just a little bit. I'm, I'm, I think it's it's important that we get a kind of a wide range from the coaches to hear they're uh, such a polarizing idea for fans and for the media, but I'm not so sure it's as polarizing with the coaches. So I'm curious to hear uh, what your opinion is on it. Yeah, uh, the approach that I have is, is kind of, it's, it's almost person by person in our gym. Um, if it's a floater, I want the mentality um, more, more cases than not to probably be, how can we disrupt the, the serve receive on that end? Um, can we, can we hit a spot? Can we take them out of system? Can we create some sort of chaos? So maybe we get, you know, a off speed shot back and then we could go ahead and terminate from that end. Um, now at times, will it be, I need you to try to hit the spot and that's where you're likely going to go for the ACE. Yeah. At times, but more so it's, can we hit our zone? Can we be challenging on the float side? If it's a top spin serve, um, and if it's a guy that's going to be consistently going 60 miles, maybe 65 miles an hour plus, um, you probably have a green light if the toss is there. And I want you to be aggressive, whether it's a four-step approach or a five-step approach and jump in at least two feet into the court, cut down that that time that the serve receive has the ability to, to react, and let's be a little aggressive on that. Now, if it's a bad toss, just making sure that we're going to hit our spot and still put that ball in the court. Um, and at the very least, if it's going to be an error, I would like the error to be over the net and not in the net. At least make the server receive think about it and, and not just bury that into the net. And, and we don't really have that go anywhere. Uh, speaking of serving, uh, Joe, um, 
realize you wanted to have the focus on this year's team, but um, can you tell much how much uh, the uh, graduation of Diego uh, means to the, to you, and how do you replace him? Yeah, uh, Diego was a really well-rounded player. Um, you know, he had everyone talked about his serve and, and the first contact that he had with that. Um, and then he was also great in the sense of the offensive prowess too. Um, and then how to replace that is, you know, AJ was kind of right there with him and neck and neck. And I think, you know, AJ is elevating his game to get that to the next level. And with the addition of some of our freshmen and even some of those other guys that we're starting to crack the starting lineup late in the season. Um, those guys are starting to get to that next level right now and continue to elevate their game. And so um, it's going to be difficult to replace it right away, but I think I have full confidence in the guys that are making those improvements right now to kind of get to that level and be ready to go at that moment. And year by year, the offense usually changes. And so where our offense is currently at, I think the guys are kind of getting acclimated to it and it's going to be pretty solid once we kind of get going and get clicking on all cylinders. Fellas, before we wrap up, one more question. It's media day, so you always get a random question. This is from our junior reporter, my five-year-old daughter. She wants to know, what is your favorite ride at Disney World or Disneyland? And if you haven't been, what ride would you most want to do? So we'll just uh, rapid fire go around. <laughs> Coach, you want to start? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I haven't been. My fiance has been numerous times, and I keep getting ridiculed for that. But I would, uh, I would like to say that the one that I would probably look forward to, even though I'm afraid of heights, just because I think it would be a good experience, is uh, she. She likes Harry Potter World a lot, so I would assume I would probably want to go see what that Hagrid's ride is like. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for me, it's got to be Space Mountain. Uh, I, I think it's a lot of fun to do the one in the dark like just do it in the dark uh no matter how many times you ride it it's always a surprise uh when the turns and all the hills are coming up so i've been to disney world one time and it was when i was first grade and i was scared of rides back then so <laughs> i remember i had a lot of my friends there and they would ride the rides and i would i would never go on them i'd go with my mom go to the little the little kid spot but that was a long time ago i think now the one was Space Mountain, what Kyle said. I heard that one's that one's electric. It's a fun ride. Okay. Um, so it's also been a while for me since I've been to Disney. Um, definitely did not just look up the name of it because I forgot on Google. But um, I believe it's Splash Mountain. I mean, kind of generic, but uh, it's always a good time. You know, it's hot day out, summer get a little wet, you know, nice, nice, cool breeze. It's probably a favorite, my favorite. Like I said, we asked the hard hitting questions here on, on media day. So 